Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm here with a wrap up video. I did one a couple of months ago, but I haven't really read much since then. So today I'm going to talk about them now. I think there's five books in total. I only have three of them here in person. The other two I'm still going to talk about because one of them was amazing. So the first one I've got is Red Rising by Pierce Brown and I recently just bought the rest of the series and because I'm me and realized that the first book doesn't match, I went and bought the actual matching first book in that series. But these books, well this book, is fantastic. I recently read a sentence from someone's review that said, you will start off by hating Pierce Brown, then you will learn to live with Pierce Brown, and then you will love Pierce Brown. And I can attest to that because when I went into this book, I literally hated it. The first half of this book I was thinking of DNFing it. I wasn't going to finish the book, I was going to put it down because it was just not my cup of tea. But by the end of the book I can probably say it's been one of my favourite books to read so far in the most recent years. It follows Dara who is a red and Dara is currently working on Mars and helping to colonise it so he's doing a lot of mining to help build it for a greater future. Except that he doesn't realise that he's been lying to his entire life and Mars is already colonised by these rich golds and other colours and treating the reds like trash. And when something very unfortunate happens to Darrow, he ends up getting recruited by the Rebellion where he is going to take down all those golds. And the first book follows Darrow as he basically infiltrates this uh, gold school for all the best of the smartest golds and it is really hectic and crazy and it really is so well written and action packed and these characters are so flawed and human and I just loved it. Next up we have Neverland and it's by Margot McGovern. I didn't actually give this one a rating on Goodreads because I just... I didn't really like it. And I actually had a conversation with somebody not so long ago when I was giving them my verbal version of a review and they said to me that I was just reading the book wrong. <laughs> Are you serious? It's just so stupid to tell someone how to read a book. Apparently, as a reader, it is my fault for not enjoying it. It's not like I picked up this book with the intention of not liking it. And yet I was still made to feel like it is my fault, which is a little unfair on the book because I'm kind of now just associating with bad experiences. But anyway, this book is actually a really cool book. It was not my cup of tea, if you guys didn't get that from that short little rant there, but it's definitely one that I can see a lot of people liking. I had to read this for my book club and like I said, like a lot of people liked it, some people didn't like it. Um, it does a lot of mental illnesses in this book as well because it is based around a young girl who basically tries to kill herself at the start of this book and then she is sent back to her home, which is on this island, which is also now like a mental institution to help people with these problems. And she's back with her old friends and a new guy and the story progresses and we get to see them all change into different people some for the better and some for the worse and yeah like I can see why people enjoyed it but for me I didn't really like the writing style and I think that at some points the message could have been clearer or it could have been a little better written but I didn't like it some of you guys might it's up to you guys if you want to read the book. Uh, one of my other books that I read for book club recently was Peace with Pearl by Eliza Henry Jones. I don't know why I'm pointing because I really can't be bothered to edit the photo into this, but it is another Australian author. Um, Eliza Henry Jones has written a couple of adult books as well. And I actually enjoyed this one, which is a surprise because I have not been reading much YA contemporary lately because it's just not my cup of tea. But I enjoyed this one. So Peace with Pearl is basically a very similar premises to Neverland, except that I found that it was a lot more better written um, is the kindest way to put it. The characters in it were a lot more human and flawed and you could relate to a lot of them. So it follows our main character who is Gwen and Gwen has lost her mother. Her mother passed away and there's also some other dark secrets that keep threatening in the back of her mind that she never really dealt with. So this book wonderfully deals with grief and I think it's probably one of the best ways that I've seen it written because no one can really just heal at the click of a finger and it does take time and this book shows that. And not only does it show that with this main character but there are other characters in this book that have mental illnesses that you get to see more of and it's filled with these characters who are hilarious and real and funny and when you're reading the book not much happens but it's so character driven that you can't put it down because you just want to know what happens to these characters and you don't want to stop reading about them and I really enjoyed that about the book so I probably gave it about a three out of five stars um, that's still pretty high for me considering that my ratings for books have recently have been pretty low but I did really enjoy it. So Reaper at the Gates and that one is by Sabata here this is part of an Ember in the Ashes Quartet there is one more book to go and I have no idea what they're going to do in the fourth book because like this book just set it up for like big things to happen and whether that's big good things or big bad things I'm not gonna say it because that'll be a spoiler. My feelings during this book 
were very mixed. I kind of expected a lot more from A Reaper at the Gates, and at the same time, so much happened, and so much heartbreak, and I just was not prepared for the ending as much as I thought that I would be. Once again, it's a very character-driven book, and I like that about it. I really love the characters because, like I have said in previous reviews, I like characters who are real, flawed, and that you can kind of see a little bit of yourself in, which this is what Sabata here manages to do. But I can say that no matter what, her writing is fantastic. It is a writing style that no matter what she wrote, I would read it. She could write a story that was about, like, dogs. Oh no, I would read any story with dogs in it about children that were playing a ball game and she would still somehow make that interesting because her writing is just fantastic and phenomenal which is why I think I loved A Reaper at the Gates and gave it such a high rating despite not a lot actually happening in this book. Basically if you guys haven't heard of An Ember in the Ashes before you guys need to read it. If you guys like fantasy it is a series to pick up. It is so so good and it is brutal and it is amazing and it has a strong kick-ass characters that you will love. And the very last book that I read was Br Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, and Marcus Zusak is one of my all-time favourite authors, so I was so excited to get advanced readers of his new book, and it was so fucking good. So I come from a pretty good family, I've got five siblings myself, and in this book it features a whole lot about family, I could just pick out each character or someone in my family, and it made it all that little bit more special. Plus that, and mixed with Marcus Zusak's absolutely poetic and stunning writing, it just creates this tale that you were not really prepared for. Reading the blurb of this book, I did not expect what actually happened in this. I, by the end of it, was sobbing. I was a wreck. I think I actually cried in total about six times during this entire book, and it was amazing. One time, she punched me in the face. It was awesome. It broke me. I was broken by the end of it, but like the best kind of broken. I would say if you guys are going to pick up Bridge of Clay, the first 50 to 80 pages are rather slow. You were just learning a whole lot about the characters, but it becomes so worth it in the end. So the so Bridge of Clay focuses around a group of brothers and especially Clay. It is not told from Clay's point of view, but from one of his other brothers. And you get to see him as he makes a lot of different decisions in his life. So Clay has a very heavy secret that he is keeping hidden and at the start of the book his father actually returns to town and all of the siblings call him a murderer of which will be revealed when you guys read the book and it comes with a decision for the boys if they would like to help their father build a bridge or if they would never like to see him again basically and out of all the kids only Clay is the one to volunteer to help and they get to watch him kind of grow as a character and all the siblings and learn more about his past and his mother and his father and there was just so many beautiful emotions and it was just so great. And that isn't because like I'm just a Marcus Zusak fan but like the book was amazing. So there you guys have the books that I recently read and um, out of all of them I actually did enjoy quite a lot so that's a good haul compared to what my last haul was like so let's hope that I keep on being blessed with amazing reads at the moment. Let me know what you guys are reading down below and let me know if you guys like any of these books because then we can chat about them and I'm always happy to do that. Thank you guys for watching and I shall be back again with another video soon. I'm actually going to record a few today so that I can upload them more often because like I said I'm just one busy cat at the moment. Bye! I don't want to make this video way too long for you guys so I'm going to kind of be quick going through them. I'm not going to talk about every single book in this video. I have read some of these already 